Do you guys feel that the gaming industry is exhausting as a player? Because I certainly do. We've just had terrible news bomb after terrible news bomb. I mean, this started back in April, right? When we first saw Ubisoft's edition for Outlaws, where you had like a season pass for a single player game that locked a job at a hut mission when you're like transporting freaking Han Solo in the game, like kind of a important character, right? Locking that behind like a $110, $120 paywall. But you know, that's kind of par for the course for just regular Ubisoft, big budget kind of games. You kind of do that kind of stuff. You know, we've seen it before. And then soon after that, you had Tarkov's Unheard Edition, which they've definitely stepped a little bit back on originally, but they're still charging the full $250. I guess now it's on discount, but oh my gosh, you're selling it for $200. What a steal. And guys, I mean, we just got out of the whole Helldivers debacle, which I'm actually surprised as hell that Sony stepped back on their decision to require PSN accounts. I mean, like, I mean, bravo to them. It was a rough road to get there, but at least you did it. But then Big Daddy and Microsoft just came in and was like, hey, guess what? I could do one better. Because Microsoft's closed down Redfall developer Arcane Austin, Hi-Fi Rush developer Tango Gameworks, and more devastating gut cuts to Bethesda. Now, I'm sure you've already heard a bunch of people today talking about this topic, so I'm just going to talk more about like what's going on with this. Why is this happening? Why is it so ridiculous right now within the game industry with this many cuts happening constantly? There's even an entire Wikipedia page dedicated to all the video game layoffs, and you can see right here on the far right, there's been a lot of layoffs and it's not slowing down anytime soon in 2024. In fact, January 24 was the most layoffs we had in most recent months. Also, did you know that 64.5% of you people who watch the channel are not subscribed? If you guys want to keep up to date with gaming, make sure you subscribe, tap like if you want to help out the video now, grow them for us to do better with YouTube things and you know, let's get right back into those details. Now we can talk about Redfall as we kind of assumed that like, yeah, Redfall wasn't really doing that great. Now the only actual metric we can actually look at for numbers when it comes to population are the Steam charts numbers, which obviously Game Pass is gonna be a significant part of the population for this game, right? But you can see like last 40 minutes of recording this video, like 40 people are playing this game on Steam. And if you look at Xbox's most played games, you don't see Redfall on here at all, or nor did I ever really see it on this chart as well. Maybe when it first launched because like it's the new game thing, but like there really aren't many people playing this game. But the main thing is with Redfall is that they're kind of taking a step back on their word. And let me show you what I'm talking about. Because one of the leads who recently just retired, Pete Hines, said that Redfall will be a good game eventually compared to Fallout 76. Which 76 is a fine game by itself. It's not really my cup of tea I tried out recently. I'm thinking about making a video about it, but I just kind of was like, it's just so man, not really what I'm looking for in a Fallout game. But quoted here saying, we are the same company that has had launches that didn't go the way we wanted it. And we don't quit or abandon stuff just because it didn't start right. You know, he cites Elder Scrolls, he cites Fallout 76 and says Redfall is no different to us. And yeah, Rondel Scrolls Online is actually doing pretty well for itself. Final 76 is doing very well recently because of the TV show. So a lot of people are like, okay, we'll believe you on your word. Stick with Redfall and see where you go with this. But the funny thing is, keep in mind that this news article was posted back on September 1st of 23. And then less than one month after making that statement, P. Hines actually retired. Of course, it could have been more of a retirement, if you know what I mean. Knowing this information just makes me feel like Microsoft just like kind of pushed him out of the way and once P. Hines was gone, they can, couldn't rely on his statement that he made to then cancel Redfall. Now the Redfall studio Arcane did put this comment out saying that they are willing to help out people who buy into the premium buy upgrade to be able to get your value back, but that doesn't mean they're gonna get their money back. Most likely they get like some kind of in-store credit effectively, because you know that money's been spent already. But the most baffling part about this entire thing, I think what really gets people upset about these entire studios being shut down or merged into other ones, is Tango Gameworks. Because Tango Gameworks recently made an amazing game in Hi-Fi Rush. In their shutdown announcement, they just said, thanks for exploring our worlds and Hi-Fi Rush will continue to be playable for anyone who wants to play it. It's just crazy because Tango Gameworks has a track record of proven success. If you just use Hi-Fi Rush for an example right here, you can see on Metacritic, 87%, that's pretty dang good, especially for a shadow drop launch. Overall reviews of this game on Steam are 97% positive. And this game literally won multiple awards of saying like best audio design, 
design, best art direction. But don't take my word for the praise. Take a look at Xbox Marketing Vice President Aaron Greenberg. In a reply to Jazz Corey, talking about like what are the measurements of success when it comes to like no physical version, no marketing, no multiplayer for a game like Hi-Fi Rush. And Aaron Re Greenberg actually replied saying, Hi-Fi Rush was a breakout hit for us and our players in all key measurements and expectations. We couldn't be happier with the team at Tango Gameworks delivered with this surprise release. And just over a year later, the entire studio gets shut down. So Microsoft has an incredibly talented team underneath them, part of Bethesda in Tango Gameworks, and they just shut them down. It's such a huge waste of potential. I think this really just comes to show the current state of the game industry. When you literally do everything right, you make a great game within time and you don't even have to market it and it gets success, and then you still get shut down? What's going on? Now, Matt Booty, who's one of the leads at Microsoft Gaming, did send out a company-wide email talking about this kind of the short and sweet of what's happening, basically. But there was one part that felt really just weird to throw into an email like this. Because after talking about all this devastating news of studios being shut down, merged, and just taken away, really, at the end, it sounds like a more of a promotion towards Bethesda, trying to say like, oh, no, we're de dedicated, right? Bethesda remains a key pillar of Xbox gaming portfolio. I'm sure it is now saying that Starfield, Star Space, Fallout 76 update, Indiana Jones with Great Circle, Elder Scrolls Online, Golden Road are all aligned with our plans and stuff like that. But like, yeah, like but after something like this happens, especially for a studio like Tango Gameworks gets shot down, like what's going to stop? them from shutting anybody else down i mean they literally did everything right and you still shot them down so what's gonna stop this from happening again in the future like these are people with jobs that like finally reach a point in their career they're probably incredibly proud and happy about and then you just take it away from them like that and i'm not the only one that feels like this as well arcane leon studio head shouted out on twitter as well about this dinga bakaba if i pronounce that correctly hopefully went off the of twitter just kind of saying absolutely terrible permission to be a human saying don't throw us into gold fever gambits don't use us as straw men for miscellaneous slash blind spots don't make our work environments darwinistic jungles and he's totally right about that the game industry has just been incredibly volatile at this point where it might not even be something that's worth getting into as a whole because of just how ridiculous it's been where like people who see success and still have failures i mean this is an industry where your bosses can literally just flaunt how awesome you're online unwarranted right they didn't really ask for the same thing like aaron greenberg didn't have to reply to this but he wanted to let people know like hey we're doing great things at xbox right high fire rush is amazing where your leads can say your your game's going to be great eventually just like the previous examples right but then a month later you're actually being retired most likely fired really if anything i just kind of feel like at the end of this article trying to flaunt on these new games coming out for their platform it's like they're it's like he's trying to be a salesman while also delivering all this terrible news of all these studios getting shut down just felt a little tone deaf don't you think but talking about being tone deaf on the same day of this entire thing is just wild that they even promoted this at the same time is that xbox removes feel the burn tagline from new controller after heavy criticism what we're talking about here is that <laughs> I can't believe they actually did this, but they actually posted this on the same day of all the you know people being fired. It was the feel the burn type of control? Then they changed the wording of it, just the fire vapor now. But like, I think a lot of people that day were definitely feeling the burn. Obviously, I'm sure the marketing department over at Microsoft probably didn't have direct communications of when these studios are going to be shut down. But you just know that some posting something like this, right, that same day of all that kind of stuff happening, just like, just. A little tone deaf don't you think this is also just terrible news that for xbox to put out about a month before their entire showcase like this news is going to be looming over everyone's head this is happening on june 9th guys like this is happening in about a month and you're gonna release this type of terrible news out there it just seems like it's baffling that xbox would do that because like watching this showcase now everyone's gonna be thinking okay who's out of this list is gonna get shut down who wants to put a money in the pool the dead pool if you will and it's not like microsoft isn't making money you can go online and re read the transcript of the microsoft financial fiscal year for last quarter and they're doing pretty well for themselves saying our third quarter revenue was 61.9 billion dollars up 17 percent 
and earnings per share was $2.94, up 20%. Just constantly, it feels like these higher ups, these execs, like the 1% you always hear about, seem to be thriving right now, or people who are actually having to do all the dirty work are the ones left behind. Now, the reason why we've been seeing so many layoffs within gaming is because all these high up execs saw a huge pushback during the pandemic, and they're like, let's dump our investments into gaming and see how far we can push this. And then once things kind of leveled back out, they're like, oh, wait, you guys aren't going to keep gaming at the same levels when you're stuck indoors all day? That's surprising. Well, I have to lay off a ton of people now, I guess. While all these execs and higher ups get to keep their jobs, every person who actually had to make all the stuff for them, well, got let go. Capitalism, baby. But man, it's just been exhausting in the last few weeks, really, of just being a gamer out there. Just so much bad news and so many people just trying to make as much money as they can off of us. While we're out here struggling to pay rent, let me know what you guys think about the whole thing in the comments down below. If you made it this far, I hope I earned a like and maybe a subscribe from you guys. So thank you all for watching. Catch you on the next one. Peace out.